Hello everyone, welcome back to History of Mathematics. We are continuing our work through Stuart Hollingdale's book, Makers of Mathematics. And in this and the next video, we will be talking about the work of Carl Frederick Gauss. So Gauss is a, a titan of mathematics. Um, if you were to ask professional mathematicians who the most important contributors to the discipline were, you would probably hear uh, Isaac Newton, Archimedes, and Gauss. And many people would probably rank Gauss as the most important contributor to the science of mathematics. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about his work. We're going to focus on a couple of key areas that are a little more accessible as we get closer to modern times in our study of the history of mathematics. The actual work that some of these people did is a little bit beyond an elementary course. It's a little too specialized um, for students of this course. We're really only assuming a knowledge of algebra, trig, and calculus. So we can't really talk about some of the stuff that Gauss did, but we'll give a little overview. Let's switch over to the document camera and work on some stuff. One of the reasons Gauss is so highly regarded is because of all the different areas where he made significant contributions. One of those is algebra, where he provided the first proof of the fundamental theorem of algebra. Gauss is also famous for demonstrating that a polygon with 17 sides could be constructed using straight edge and compass methods. In other words, the standard tools of Euclidean geometry. But he actually went a bit further than that, and he actually was able to show which polygons with a prime number of sides are constructible by these methods. He made significant contributions to number theory, to differential geometry, and to non-Euclidean geometry, which he basically invented. We could even include things like numerical analysis on this list, and even some concepts in physics are still still bear the name of, of Gauss for his, his work. But what I want to get into right now is kind of a famous story from Gauss's youth. Okay, so the story usually goes like this. Gauss had a teacher who kind of didn't want to deal with his students for a little while, so he gave them some busy work. So the assignment that Gauss was given was add up all the numbers in here we're talking about. natural numbers up to 100. Okay, so in other words, we want to find the value of this sum. 1 plus 2 plus 3, and we keep on going, stopping at 100. Okay, now you notice I kind of snuck in a few additional terms there. So the story goes that the teacher gave this assignment because he didn't want to deal with the students for a little bit and he thought this would keep them busy. But Gauss was able to find this sum almost immediately after the teacher gave the problem and he was the only one of the students who got it right, even though a bunch of other students had spent more time on it. So let's think about what he might have done to get this sum so quickly. 
So if we look at this sum, we can see that if we don't consider individual numbers, but we consider pairs of numbers, there's a very nice pattern. If you look at the first and last and add them together, you get 101. If you look at the second number in the sequence and the one that is next to last, you also get 101. And you would see that here, too, and you would see that, in fact, for all the pairs of numbers, provided you kind of take them from each end. So, we're getting 50 pairs of numbers. And all the pairs total 101. So this sum, 1 plus 2 plus 3, oops, I'm off the bottom of the screen there. 1 plus 2 plus 3, we keep on going until we reach 100. We can find that by doing 50 times 101, and we get 5,050. So we're guessing that this is something like what Gauss did to find the sum. Now, it's not this specific sum is the only thing that you can, can use this with. You can use this whenever you're adding terms that are in what we call an arithmetic progression. So let me go and give you a second example of this. Okay, so here, let's say we wanted to find this sum, 3 plus 6 plus 9, and we keep on going until we reach 120. Okay, now this is a series where we're adding up a bunch of terms, and the terms are in what we call an arithmetic progression. And an arithmetic progression means we get from one term to the next by adding the same thing each time. So you'll notice if you start with 3, and you add 3, you get 6. Add 3 again, you get 9. Add 3 again, you would get the next term, which is 12. And you keep on going until you hit 120. Okay. Now let me, um, let me go backwards a little bit in the series here. Um, so the last term would have been 120, which means the term before would have been 117, which means the term before would have been 114. Okay, so a couple of more terms in our series to help make the pattern a little bit more clear. Okay, now in this case, if we follow the strategy that we suspect Gauss used in that problem, We notice if we start pairing up the numbers, the pairs all total to 123. Now the question is, how many pairs do we have? Okay, because that'll affect what we put here. Remember last time we had to take the number of pairs that we had, which was 50, times the total for each pair. So we're going to do something times 123, but the question is, what's the something? Okay, now, in this case, it's not too hard to figure out. We can come up with a, a quick little formula for each term. Okay, and my formula would look like this. An equals 3n. Okay, if you want the first term, you do 3 times 1. If you want the second term, if you want a2, 3 times 2, and you get 6. If you want the third term, 3 times 3 is 9. Next one would be 12. a4 is the fourth term. 3 times 4 would give you 12. Okay, so the question is, 120 equals 3n for what n? And that's not hard to follow. 
find the solution to, divide both sides by 3, and you get n equals 40. Okay, so that means there are 40 terms. Okay, but I want to be careful not to do this. No, that's not right. Okay, 40 terms means I would have 20 pairs of numbers to add up. So this should be a 20 times 123. Okay, so it's pretty easy to do. You double this number and then stick a zero on the end. Double 123, you get 246. 2460. So 20 times 123 is 2460. And that would be the sum for this right here. Okay, so the general scheme that Gauss used was to pair things up. And when you're working with these arithmetic progressions and you pair kind of working from the ends, if you do first and last, and then second and second to last, and third and third to last. If you pair them up like that, you'll always get a constant value for that sum. And then you just need to figure out how many pairs of numbers you're dealing with. In this case, we're dealing with 20 pairs of numbers because we have 40 terms. And then you can get the sum very quickly, just doing one operation. You do one multiplication rather than dealing with all those additions. So a very convenient way to deal with this class of sums. So that famous story involving Gauss and his uh, teacher is recounted here. Um, the good news about that teacher is he realized that uh, Gauss had some real mathematical talent and he did uh, work with him eventually, um, kind of helping him get into a university and things like that. So um, so teacher wasn't all bad there. So we are going to have another video, which we will link to right down there, that will discuss Gauss and his contributions to the fundamental theorem of algebra, and that will be our next video.